I'm Matt Bichard with REIT.com here in Chicago for REIT Week 2013. Joining me for this CEO Spotlight is Bruce Shanzer, President and CEO of Cedar Realty Trust. Bruce, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. With your company's focus on grocery-anchored shopping centers, how are you finding the, the market for acquisitions and what makes up the ideal acquisition? So Cedar owns a portfolio of 67 grocery-anchored shopping centers that straddle the Washington, D.C. to Boston corridor. We have about 10 million square feet in our portfolio. We like these assets because we find that grocery-anchored shopping centers have a higher degree of traffic. They drive roughly twice the traffic of other types of anchored shopping centers, and so that's very good for our co-tenants, and we find that really enhances a center's vitality. So when we think about the types of centers that we'd like to add to our portfolio, it would be centers very similar to the centers that we currently own. The thing I would note is that when we think about capital allocation within our portfolio and as part of our business, we don't just think about acquisitions. So one of the things that we have done a fair amount of is investing back into our shopping centers. And so we've done a fair amount of redevelopment and value add investment into our centers. And when you think about it from a return perspective, we find that we're able to achieve more attractive, unlevered returns on those sorts of investments relative to brand new acquisitions. And so when we think about capital allocation more broadly within our portfolio, we think about marrying acquisitions with redevelopment and value add investing into our portfolio. And what are some of the trends you've noticed in your centers in terms of consumer preferences? Uh, in terms of the first uh, consumer preference that we're starting to see, this greater focus on wellness and healthy living, it really manifests itself in a number of different ways. So first is we're seeing increased medical usages in our shopping centers, so whether it's emergency care or outpatient services uh, out of a storefront. We're also seeing continued expansion from companies such as GNC, who sell supplements and vitamins. Uh, additionally, we're seeing health clubs, exercise facilities, and um, we're seeing that uh, being expanded across all demographics. And again, that's really just consistent with what we've seen more broadly in terms of people being more aware of the need to exercise as part of healthy living. Uh, and the last thing I would highlight is that there's a greater focus on organic foods. People are interested on the sources of their foods. And so uh, we're seeing uh, all sorts of retailers who are focused on that. Uh, the second point that I'd made about the continued success of the discounters and the value-oriented retailers, those are, of course, the dollar stores that we've seen plenty of, as well as uh, such companies as TJX and Ross, who have all had a fair amount of success. Uh, the last point that I would highlight really relates to the growing interest of the fast casual restaurant chains, both the newer concepts, so you think about a Panera or Noodles, uh, as well as the older concepts such as McDonald's or Outback. They all have a growing interest in getting a presence in the grocery anchored centers. They like the traffic patterns that the grocery anchored centers drive. And so again, there's a virtuous relationship between increased tenant demand and the increased customer preference. And so one of the nice things about our portfolio is that we're well situated to address the tenant desire to be in these types of centers. And lastly, what about challenges? What are some of the biggest obstacles to continued growth in your sector going forward? One is the lack of new supply uh, in the shopping center space. There really are no meaningful developments going on in terms of new supply of shopping centers. And then the second is the increased degree of competition in the retailing space, both in terms of better operating practices by strong retailers, as well as the presence and growing presence of e-commerce uh, as a retail force. In terms of the lack of new supply, this is, of course is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, the lack of new supply makes our existing shopping centers more valuable. So we are able to increase our pricing power because of the fact that there is less supply in the face of growing tenant demand. However, a corollary to this is that as institutional capital chases after these assets, as these assets get bid up, to the extent that we want to acquire assets, those assets are more expensive. The other consideration is really the increasingly competitive retailer environment. And what we're seeing is we're seeing a need by retailers to really focus on best practices uh, and on really focusing on protecting their turf and being offensive in terms of growing their, uh, their businesses to compete with very well-run competitor companies. This has impacted, to some extent, square footage requirements for some of these companies as they try to reduce their square footage requirements in order to manage their expenses. Uh, we've seen, specifically in the grocery space, for example, increased 
uh, increased activity by non-classic supermarkets in the grocery business. So we've seen drugstores selling groceries, we've seen uh, dollar stores selling groceries, and that certainly has impacted uh, our businesses as well. And it's really required us at Cedar to become much more nimble and thoughtful and forward-looking in thinking about the direction that the business is going in. The nice thing is, in a company of our size, we're able to be particularly nimble in addressing some of those challenges, and we've had a lot of success uh, in addressing those challenges. For more on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com.